Well, not many inside Home Park will forget that six-goal thriller back in November. Three months on, and Argyle make the 400-mile trip to the Riverside to take on Middlesbrough for the first time in 13 years. And no doubt we'll be hoping to do exactly as they did that day and return to Devon with all three points. They are, though, looking for their first victory in three weeks. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Charlie Price and this is Argyle TV's pre-match show. Thanks a lot for joining us this afternoon. We've got a, another huge game of championship action ahead of us. The Greens up in Middlesbrough trying to put behind that disappointing loss on Tuesday night to West Bromwich Albion. There'll be a familiar face in the opposition as well. We all know about Finn Azaz and he's starting to hit some form for the Reds of Middlesbrough scoring in their victory over the runaway leaders Leicester last weekend. It's been 13 years since the Green Army made the trip up to North Yorkshire. They won on that occasion and we are hoping they can do the same again today. You can follow all of the action with us here on Argyle TV. Uh, You can get your match passes, whether they be audio or video, from our website right now. It should be a cracker And fingers crossed for a second away win of the season. But there's lots to get through over the next couple of hours. Lots to talk about. So it's lucky that we have Aaron Cusack, the former Argyle Academy coach, with us. And Aaron, I think we said the same thing on Tuesday, Mm -hmm. but the games just keep on rolling. One after the other, Charlie. Good afternoon. And um, tough opposition as well. We know this league is difficult, but it just seems that the, the, the games are coming thick and fast against the teams in that higher echelon of the league um, but it's a test that all the players will be ready and relishing and you know roll on three o'clock and it is in a in a weird way I suppose good you hear it in football a lot actually to have something to play for after a disappointing result and performance just a few days ago very much so you know they say there's no time like the present where they've got an opportunity to try and you know put the the wrongs to right this afternoon you know it's a very difficult fixture for everyone to endure the other evening but Three days on, four days on, they're ready to go and they would have had a, a regroup and get together. And, you know, a Saturday fixture, just even the change of the dynamic, i.e. under lights, now it's a Saturday afternoon, it just mm-hmm. the change and freshens things up and, you know, that they'll be, they won't want to have a repeat of the other night, put it that way. No, absolutely not. We hope they won't as well and we hope they can come back from uh, one of the longest trips of the season with three points in mm-hmm. the bag. Um, coming up over the next couple of hours before kickoff, then, um, we will hear, of course, from head coach Ian Foster. Brendan Galloway also chats about his recent form and we dive into the Middlesbrough camp, which is a pretty happy one at the moment, and hear from their manager, Michael Carrick. Uh, before all of that, though, it's time to get the all-important team news for this afternoon's game. And there we go. There's the Argyle side. Four changes made from the defeat on Tuesday. But I think everybody's eyes are drawn to the top of that substitutes bench. A certain number one, M. Cooper, Aaron Cusack. He's not starting. He's not playing. He probably won't play today. But it, there's almost like a kind of comforting hug seeing his name yeah, back in the Yeah, it's excellent, side. isn't it? You know, he would have been devastated to have had another setback after suffering such a serious knee injury this time last year. And, you know, we've said it previously, Charlie, about when a player just comes back into the four and they're now involved, it just, it can galvanise a squad. You just feel that extra bit of confidence to know that he's there, he's waiting, you know, and, and Connor Hazard is, is the number one at the minute, but Cooper will now be pushing him to, re, to re-grab his spot. And knowing that he's available, because we also know how good he is with the ball at his feet as well, um, that might you know encourage people to play a little bit more often, going back into him and playing out. So it's great to see him back. Yeah, those changes then. Um, Jordan Houghton comes back into the side, as does Julio Plegathuello. Mm. And the two wing-backs that we've seen flip-flop yeah. over the last couple of matches also change again with Miller and Sorinola in. It is the first time, I believe, that Houghton and Randall have started a game under Ian Foster. Oh, okay. And it obviously yeah. was a partnership that was that was well established beforehand, wasn't it? It was. It was. It wasn't like they were alien to each other. They know each other's games really. I think they actually dovetail really nicely. I think um, we know how well Jordan Houghton can dictate and orchestrate the game, and Adam Randall brings that industriousness to the to the pitch as well. So I think they they they're very they complement each other really well. And I think it's alongside each other, they're comfortable, they're familiar. 
and it's just an opportunity to maybe build or rekindle that partnership that we've seen be very successful previously. Mm. Yeah. We, 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 there's been such a, a high volume of matches recently. Mm -hmm. We've heard um, Ian Foster say that the, the players have, uh, are obviously tied. The extra time game against Leeds, yeah. playing every three yeah. days since then, um, and he has changed it up a lot today. You know, those two loan signings that he brought in that have started every game under yeah. him so far, and Divine and Phillips on the bench today pushes JB a little bit further forward. We yeah. think, yeah, and obviously allows. Plegethwello to come back into that back line. How, how do you kind of see those? Changes? Well, I think it's important that, you know, Foster's still getting to know everything about the club and the players and things like that, but there's an also an element of trust. So you've got to, you've also got to accept that the players who were here prior to his arrival are good footballers and were doing a decent job, a good job. So whilst I appreciate sometimes you bring your own players in and you feel comfortable and familiar with those players because you've worked with them previously, you've also got to trust what's already here. And I think hopefully today we see a partnership in Randall and, and Houghton come to fruition. Pleguzello gets some minutes again back into a little bit of consistency because he would have been no doubt looking at it and going, well, I've, I've been playing regularly and now he's not played at all. So, But testament to the players because it's easy to go into your shell and maybe use excuses while they're not playing. But they've actually done enough in training to, to warrant a, a starting place this afternoon. Callum Wright also included yeah, it's great. It's great to see today. Freddie Asaka, incidentally, playing for the under-18s, whose game is still going on against Swindon. I'll wait until the, the final whistle is blown, but it is a final day shootout, that one. So uh, news to come on that. Uh, that's the Argyle side then. Let's have a look at the, the Middlesbrough lineup. Now, they picked up an incredible victory over the league leaders away from home last time out. Um, Michael Carrick has made a couple of changes um, which we think might change the formation a little bit. Luke Thomas, who struggled with injuries of late, he comes in on the left-hand side. Uh, and Mar uh, Marcel Force um, has come in to the forward line, which we think, Aaron, will see them change the form formation a bit and, and, and maybe have more... Well, they definitely have more attackers in their, in their side. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I would say, we're not sure. We were wrestling whether they might go to like a 4-1-4-1. Whether Silvera, Sammy Silvera will play through the middle or whether uh, Force will play through the middle, we'll soon see at kickoff, Charlie. Um, but what they have got is they've got good balance in their, in their players in that attacking sense. They've got a variety of left and right footers. What we don't know is whether they'll play inverted. So whether, you know, someone like Riley McCree might play more on the, the right side who to cut in and force if he goes out to the wide left might cut in that side as well or, or Silvera. So, you know, we know they are without some of their more potent players, the ones who have contributed to a lot of their mm. goals, but they are still full of quality. You know, number 20 <laughs> is no, um, yeah, there's no surprise in that name there. We know how good Finn is as has been this year for us. And, you know, he's, he's had a very good start with, with Borough. So, um Whilst we want him to do very well, we just don't want him to do so well today, I think. You no, know? no, exactly. We'll, we'll talk about Finn a little bit later yeah, on. Yeah, sure. Um, they, they have welcomed back a couple of players into their side. Riley McGree, you mentioned, has, has been out for most of this season. Mm. Last year, he had a great season for them. Um, they've also got Latte Lath back on the bench as well, which you're kind of alluding to in seeing some of those players coming back. But they've got six out, yeah. including the likes of Johnny Howson. Hayden Hackney, who was yeah. such, he played such a, a big part, yeah. and Isaiah Brown as well. So they're chasing, the, they're still chasing the playoffs, but they, they're untimely injuries. Very much so, and I think with Isaiah Brown as well, he's been one of the most potent players they've had because he carries the ball so well. They might not have that type of replacement available, so that in itself puts them at a disadvantage potentially. So they might have, might be why they've changed their formation slightly. They haven't got the personnel who can maybe run and carry the ball as well as the play, the likes of Jones, etc. So it'll be interesting to see how they play. Um, you know, they're not in the... I know they had a brilliant victory last week, but they're not in the greatest of home form. Yeah. You know, I think their last home victory was against Chelsea um, on like January the 9th, you yeah, know? Yeah. So they've had a draw at home to Rotherham and, and well, Sunderland. You've, you've actually got to go further back than that for the last league win. Right, so okay. It's, it's, in yeah. it's in December, the last time they won in the league. Yeah. So at home. That yeah, is. sure. And it's, 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 weird. it's weird, isn't it, sometimes how they can go and beat Leicester at the Fortress that is yeah. the King Power yeah, and... and and when Struggle you look bit, at, yeah. and that's a good point, Charlie, when you look at um, their run of results, it was a, a little bit against their mm. their prediction almost, their forecast, because I think they'd lost a couple. They lost to Bristol City and they had lost at Preston and then they go away to Leicester and win, you know, and that's that's this championship division, by the yeah. way. It's so enigmatic. You never know what's going to happen. And that's why you've got to, you can't rest on your laurels and assume that they're, they're out of form. But I still feel that we've got 
the calibre of quality available to go and give them a very good game this afternoon. Well, we are getting closer to finding out, that is for sure. Uh, one man who will be hoping that they can give Middlesbrough a good game is Ian Foster. Um, Tuesday night was probably the hardest since he's come into the club. It was a rare off day at home, that is for sure. And he's keen to try and put that behind them and get it going again today. My reflections immediately after the game are the same as they are today. Um, the players maximised their efforts, you know, and on the evening our efforts weren't good enough. Um, and there's a lot of factors uh, in that, you know, the third game in six days is a big one um, against a top team who had an extra day's break than us. So um, the players um, are, are disappointed as are the staff, but. Like I say, um, when you take everything into consideration, um, we stayed in the game for a, for an hour with them, although that hour uh, for us in possession wasn't our um, best 60 minutes. Um, but look, I think um, overall I'm proud of the players in terms of them sticking together, the work ethic that they put in, the numbers um, that they achieved in terms of the physical outputs were were amazing for, for three games in six days. Um, but it was always going to be a difficult ask for us. So we won't lose too much heart in, in, in the defeat to West Bromwich Albion. Um, we'll learn from the mistakes we made. Yeah, and I suppose that's the big thing, isn't it? To, to not dwell on defeats. It's, it's the whole thing in football, isn't it? To move on and go. So mm. what have the days looked like between Tuesday and today and then tomorrow heading into Middlesbrough? Yeah, listen, we've had to obviously give the players a break. Um, so as a, as a group of staff, we've worked incredibly hard in turning around the... Uh, the West Brom game and uh, and, and the Middles Middlesbrough analysis. Um, so we're in a good place in terms of that. Players have um, had a couple of days of, of, of recovery um, and, and we go again tomorrow on the grass, getting ready for what will be a, a really exciting game for us. Mm. Just on a, a away games as well, because we've had a, a load of home games in a row, but the last couple, obviously one at Swansea, had a really good first opening against Sunderland. Mm -hmm. Um, what what are the what are the differences maybe to setting up for an away game compared to to coming and playing at home? Uh, nothing really, no no, no differences. Um, you do your opposition analysis, you pick a team that you think will get three points and can be competitive in the game uh, and can cause the opposition problems. So no, you, you analyse the opponents, you pick a game a, a game plan accordingly, and then you, you go from there. On Middlesbrough, then obviously they had a great result last time out <coughs> against Leicester. Mm -hmm. How do you assess where they are at the moment? Um, yeah, the the Leicester game, we've not taken too much from that in terms of the team shape. We don't think that they'll play that shape against uh, against us at the weekend. We think they'll revert back to their normal system. Um, but um, another another really attacking side uh, with lots of quality on the pitch. Um, so it's going to be a really challenging but um, exciting game for us. Yeah, talking of exciting, the one here just before, mm. well, in December was... <laughs> was exactly that. It was a three, a three-three. It was a thriller. Do you expect anything similar to to that again on on Saturday? Uh, who knows? Um, you know, we we were disappointed with our attack and output on um, Tuesday night. Mm. So hopefully we can um, show Middlesbrough what we're all about in that in that phase of the pitch. Um, so yeah, I prefer not to concede three goals, but I'd love to score three again. Yeah, that'd be nice. Did get a three-nil today, like he was he was wanting there. That would be an absolute joy. Um, but I mentioned it was probably the the hardest game since yeah. the, the the most difficult period since he's been in. Um, he's obviously new to Argyle and new to head coaching in the football league. Mm. But you know he's been in football long enough to know that these sort of things happen, and they do, don't they? I mean, we we lost four-one earlier in the season, came yeah. back to beat. Norwich 6-2 the next game. Not saying that's going to happen today, but they do. That sort of thing happens, doesn't it? It does. And when we look, whilst you know people find it difficult to forget what happened the other night, first half the other night it was okay. You know, it wasn't like it were, we were peppered. It was like they had a go, we had a go. It was just that little bit of period after half time, and then the rest of the half obviously mm. just consolidated the results. So what we've got to try and do is is take the best bits from it and learn from it and then look to be positive to go again because we know we've got the players that are capable of belonging in this division, the whole squad. And that's why he's made the changes today. Everyone in that squad is good enough to play. So therefore, we've got to, to remember that. Um, 
And, you know, it's always difficult when a new person comes in and they're just trying to put their identity on things and that's going to take time. But like we've said off air, like he's not had loads of time on the training ground. So therefore, that in itself has been a difficult situation to be in. So we can only take it one game at a time. And hopefully, this will be a brilliant response today from what was a disappointing outcome in the week. Do you think uh, sometimes, you know, we've had three home games in a row and our home form has been so good over the last couple of seasons. They've been against really tricky sides, lost to Leeds a couple of times, mm. draw at Coventry. And then that was culminated in the defeat against West Brom. Do you think sometimes if if you've had a difficult period, it's quite nice to go away, to to, to experience something else, to, to kind of have a little bit less pressure. There'll be f- way fewer Argyle fans. The, the pressure will be on Middlesbrough being the side higher in the yeah, table yeah, to I've, get a result. I think so. I mean, people, with all respect, Brian, Mark, Ian will be able to answer that yeah, way yeah, better yeah, than yeah, I will in yeah. terms of their playing experiences. But, but it would make sense in that it doesn't feel like you're being judged from every corner of the ground. But when you look at this head for head, our home form is better than Middlesbrough's mm. over the course of the season yeah. so far. So that doesn't make us a bad opponent you know I appreciate form is temporary and teams go in and out of form and over the last two three weeks our form has not been great but Middlesbrough hasn't been great either if you look beyond the result last week it was a brilliant result at Leicester but so they'll go into this game today having done their homework going well they are beatable they've got five or six players unavailable to them they're stronger players so why can't we go up there and put on a you know a display that will that will get get us potentially three points yeah, well, that is the hope, of course. Um, you are watching Argyle TV. You can follow the game up at the Riverside with us all afternoon. Match passes, both uh, audio and video, are available to buy online right now. Well, one of the biggest pluses for Argyle over the last couple of months or so is the return and the return to top form of Brendan Galloway. He started nine of the last 10 matches, today being the 10th start in the last 11 and seems to be back to his best. It's been demanding, uh, but I've enjoyed it. Um, All these games coming thick and fast. As a footballer, you know, I don't think there's anything better than playing every three, four days. And it is challenging, and you know I think that's why we love the sport. That's why we want to challenge ourselves um, to to in these games because at times we're going to be physically and mentally tired. But um, you know we've always got to do everything to get three points. You've been getting a lot of plaudits from everybody, supporters, coaching staff, commentators, press of, of your performances. Uh, how well do do you think you've been performing recently? Um, Personally, you know, it's always it's always tough to answer that question. I just think that you know I'm just trying to be the best that I can be, um, try and uh, give my all, uh, try and lead, try and um, be an example as well um, to the lads. And you know, I'll, you know, every time you put on the green shirt, it's an honour. So I want to give 100 percent every game, and you know, I'm willing to do that. And then, uh, you know, I, I do analyse the games back and see where I can improve and and little things like that, and then on the training pitch try and improve as well, just so that you know, when I'm out there I can give the best account for myself. You mentioned um, kind of helping others as well, and if you look at the defensive line, if it is you, Lewis Gibson and Ashley Phillips, which it has been for a while, um, those who are quite a bit, not that you're old, but those who are quite a bit younger than you, especially Ash, so yeah. like, do you feel that sort of senior position? Yeah, 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 I do, um, and you know, I just want to help them be, be the best that they can be you know we've got amazing defenders you know real real top top t- defenders all across the squad uh, so I think that we can all help each other uh, you know I'll give them some some advice from experiences that I've had um, especially Ash being 18 you know um, he's gonna learn a lot uh, and you know if I can just give him bits and bobs um, on his way then you know um, hopefully it helps him and uh, I just think that 
we've just got real good defenders all across, as I said, so uh, we can all help, help each other. Yeah, it's clear to see the quality in, in each of, of you lot as a, as a unit. Um, there have been quite, well, three goals conceded obviously on Tuesday. It was a couple against Leeds, a couple against Coventry before that. So how close do you feel is it to kind of really click in and clean sheets will start flooding? Yeah, I think that's very close. Um, I think that some of our defending as a unit has been, been really good. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's tough when you concede goals and tough when you don't keep a clean sheet because ultimately as defenders, that's what you pride yourself on is clean sheets, not conceding goals, not conceding chances. Uh, so I think that it's getting to that stage where, where, where we're going to get them and it's going to start clicking. Well, I, to be fair, I think it is clicking, but when we walk off the pitch and we concede the goals, you know, we're so angry, we're still upset. Um, so we just need to keep on working on the training pitch hard every day and hopefully improve. Well, he definitely has been probably one of Argyle's best players over the last month or so. That is yeah. for sure, Brendan Galloway. Um, showing his absolute class. So we all knew was there, but we haven't seen it enough of because of the injuries that he's had. Yeah, and, and with all respect to this football club, I think had he not been peppered with injuries, he yeah. probably would have played a higher level, played more games in the Premier League, but that hasn't happened. And what we've seen here is the quality that he brings. And I think he'll be really happy himself that he's, he's fit yeah. and he's able to get through game after game. And that's testament to the guys behind the scene as well, keeping his fitness levels high. And we can just see how he, you know, defensively, he, he loves defending, doesn't he? He likes to, to stop and thwart any attacks that are available. And, you know, now he's back and he's consistent. It felt, Charlie, like he was a new signing because we've got him regularly. It's not like he'll play for one moment and then he'll play, you know, miss two or three games. He's able to get a run of consistent games and that's what he wants. And when you get consistency, you get reliability and you, you get the, the quality coming out week in, week out. He, he kind of has a bit of everything, doesn't he? Because these clips we're seeing are, are him purely defending. Yeah. But... He can step out with it. Yep. He's played at left back before. He's got pretty good delivery. We've seen that in Everton over the last couple of seasons. Um, he's quick. He's he's good in the air. Like he is. He's a proper sort of modern day defender. He is, and and, and his upbringing, his formative years were with kind of you know high level outfits. Yeah. He was at Everton. You would expect him to add a play. It's not just being about you know being a stopper. He's a football player. And thankfully, he's still got those technical capabilities that he brings to the fore. But he's got that that little bit of aggression as well, which you need. Um, so for me, he's got a, a real balanced kind of toolkit that enables him to showcase what he's capable of doing. It's pretty considering he'd been at Everton and he was, um, I think he made his debut for the MK Dons aged 15. Hmm. Uh, so he, it, it's a name that's sort of been around for football fans for quite a yeah. long time. He's only 27. He's, 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 this is his fifth year, fourth year with yeah, Argyle now. Yeah. He's he actually had and having played at high level, he brings that experience to this team as well. Despite not being what you might class as a really experienced defender, I agree. Age wise, no, I agree. It's almost like his playing age because he's been injured so much. He's probably younger than his actual age. And what what you get when you've got people who have played with Premier League players who are internationals they pick up knowledge almost subconsciously as well. So they can bring that information with them wherever they go and then offload it and relay it to the younger players who are going to learn from him. And I think at the minute he's showcasing um, the leadership qualities that the younger players can mm. can take. Yeah, and he, he mentioned that in that chat. Yeah. And if you look at the... I know Plegothwell is playing today, who's, who's 25, got mm -hmm. experience. But the last few games, it's been Lewis Gibson, who's only 23. Yeah. Again, pretty experienced at football league level, but youngish. Ashley Phillips, obviously, only 18. And he said he, he would like to try and help them. And in, in Phillips in particular, you feel yeah. that could be the case? I think so. I think so. And, you know, I think with Brendan Galloway in particular, he, he can off, offload that and help Phillips to understand what we mean by risk, you know, what we mean by understanding when to step to the ball and what areas of the pitch to defend. Um, and these are clips recently from, from Ash Phillips. And they're not, 
they're not here to expose him, but they're just here to see how Galloway can potentially help him to prevent these types of opportunities because of these moments here, there are mini trends starting to develop and what I, you know, Ashley Phillips will understand this and get better at this as he gets older and more aware of what's expected of him because he's such a good player. So I have no doubt that he will become better. Um, and I think Phillips will help himself by learning from what Galloway can do, not only on the pitch, but also in conversations as well away from, from the pitch itself. Yeah, I mean, all the clips we showed there and it's, it, you pick clips to make a point. Yeah, so, sure. But, you know, that's that's not... That's not his game every game, but no. they're all similar type of goals. Though, so they are. There tends to be, there's a little bit of a trend where he's dropping off too much. And if if Galloway's aware of it, and no doubt he will, and he help him, it's about knowing when to step to the ball. And, you know, when you are in a defensive situation like that, there comes a time where you have to identify what you're trying to protect. Now, the clips we saw previously of Galloway compared to what we've got of um, Ash Phillips. One defends the box and one doesn't. And if we put them side by side here, you can see him playing through now here. So Galloway, if you look in all these situations, these two clips, watch. Galloway is going to defend the box. So he realises that he has to make a decision to protect what's valuable, and that is the box. And that's why he steps towards the ball. Whereas, So he's got better intuition than Phillips at the minute because he's older and he's more experienced. Where if you look at Ashley Phillips on the right-hand side now, he's not defending the box. He's actually dropping into it, which is inviting the shot. And we've got this moment here now. We, this is from the other night. If you defend the box, he steps towards the ball. Whereas Galloway's identified it and he will know how to step to the box. Phillips doesn't quite understand that yet. And that will come with time and he will get there. And Galloway will help him to understand that. And there might be opportunities for him to to see that mm. sat, you know, yeah. pitch side today. Yeah. Because sometimes when you're in the in the fight of it, you don't get take time to, you know, take take sense of what's happening. Yeah. And it, and you know, it is easy. It is very easy to forget, forget considering how well he's he's done for us already this mm. since he's been in. Just how young. Ashley Phillips is 18. Is he's not, eight, is not, not he's so young, you know, and he's he's got such talent and such potential as well. And he will get better. And when he does that more often, he will just take his game to another level. So we will learn from it. Um, and we will no doubt see him go on and play in the Premier League and maybe represent his country. And But whilst he's here, it'll be lovely to know that we've been part of his nurturing mm. and he can learn off very capable um, colleagues alongside him, teammates in someone like Brendan Galloway. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, you're watching the pre-match show here on Argyle TV. Uh, Argyle are up in North Yorkshire, taking on Middlesbrough uh, this afternoon. Uh, coming up after this, we'll take a closer look at Borough and hear from their boss, Michael Carrick. The away day. A shared passion and commitment. 12,000 miles across the season. Unforgettable memories. Past players, the goals. Waiting players, supporters, young and old. Capturing the moment, living the dream. Green Army, belting out the genocide. The stands, the shirts, the drum beats. The surging crowd moving as a giant wave. Crusaders, one and all. The Green Army. Well, as we've been saying, Middlesbrough picked up uh, a pretty incredible victory last weekend. 2-1 uh, at the King Power Stadium against Leicester. It was just the second time that Leicester have lost at home. And it meant that Middlesbrough have actually done the double over the Foxes this season. Their manager, Michael Carrick, is hoping that they can build on that and start to push up the table looking towards those playoff places. I think when you look back at it, probably it'll, it'll tell the story. I think at this moment in time, the boys are taking a lift from it, naturally. Uh, definitely not getting carried away because, you know, really come Saturday, three o'clock, Saturday's, last Saturday's gone. So, um, but certainly take the, the boost and the belief in it, and maybe actually a little bit of energy and confidence going into the game. But then, like I've just said, you know, consistency is key, and, and one game doesn't make your season, and, or two games even. I know we've beaten them twice. and um, that doesn't tell the story of the season, so it's about kind of putting the run of results together. Um, that's always the biggest challenge in this league. What's the benefit of your players knowing that they can beat the best team in this division? Therefore, if you work it out, they can probably beat any team. Yeah, but I think the honestly the boys have felt that all season. Really, I think we know what we're capable of uh, when we're at our best or close to our best. We know that. Um, 
lot of the times we feel like we've performed pretty well, but we've we've missed little bits and we've missed that edge and we've ended up throwing points away or how we see it, throwing points away rather than um, losing points. We've actually done it a little bit ourselves at times. So there's a lot of good in there, you know, and that that's that inner belief and that inner confidence. And um, I suppose you've got to take that forward and, and attack the rest of the season. You know, you've got to respect uh, who you're up against, what their threats are individually or collectively. Um, and we adapted a bit last week for, for for going to Leicester and changed a few things. And I think we always, I've, I've always kind of said it, we're, we're happy to adapt and be flexible uh, in terms of how we set up. Um, the principles kind of don't change within that, but you know, personnel in different positions. Um, so yeah, that's that's always the decision. But I th we certainly know what what they can do, what the strengths are, and um, we got to come up with something to to stop it, obviously. Yeah. We spoke um, after the last home game about the, you know, the fact that the home form hadn't been quite where you wanted it to be, but it wasn't something you were you know, overly concerned about, overly looking at. But how important is it in the you know, remainder of the season that you do get the Riverside forward? Yeah, of course. Ideally, we, 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 we're striving for that. You know, it's, um, it gives you a foundation. Um, we don't approach home games to away games much different, to be honest, I think. Last week was maybe a bit of a one-off and understandably so, but most of the time it's it's pretty much the same. Whatever game we're playing, um, but yeah, of course, you know, you you're meant to have some sort of an advantage from playing at home. That's what everyone sees. So we got to try and take advantage of of, of every little bit we can between now and the end of the season because um, every little bit matters. Well, they're just over ten points off the playoff places. Um, 13 matches to go, including today's game. So it's it's going to be quite a, quite a kind of feat to to bridge that gap. Um, but results like last weekend uh, will go a long way to kind of boosting confidence that they can. Yeah, without question, it, it gives them the, the the footprint or the you know the foothold, so to speak, to to kind of propel themselves forward. What they won't have available, I think, is any um, mishaps. Yeah, they, they haven't they haven't no got the affordance now to yeah. have any leeway to. Um, you know, maybe drop a point or game or two here. They got to keep winning, and if they do keep winning, they'll gain that momentum, that famous word in football, momentum, and that will keep them pushing, pursuing towards the the top six. Um, so they've got you know a, a massive interest in making sure that they get three points against us this afternoon, mm. um, and they've got to overcome the fact that they've got personnel unavailable. But obviously, they got a depth of squad available that will no doubt be able to mm. to put on a good show if needed. Michael Carrick mentioned it in that um, that he he. Um, he set up a slightly different way for Leicester. Ian Foster mentioned that he didn't think <coughs> yeah. that um, that they'll play the same way as they did last weekend. And it was a, a proper counter-attacking game. And yeah. one of the men at the heart of it is someone obviously we know Absolutely. incredibly well in Finazaz. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was—he's been terrific, hasn't he? I mean, he was the form he was in just before he left us was was outstanding, and he was a, a big cog as to why we were getting the results we were. And you know, he's gone to Borough and settled in very well. I think he's two in two. So of the six games he's been involved in, he scored two, and here we are, like with a counter attack here, and he's assisted one as well. So he's already making a magnificent impact. I mean, this goal here is terrific. But this is the Finners' goal that we've yeah. seen a lot at home park. Isn't it? We're just used to it now, and it kind of goes hand in hand with what he's capable. Of. I mean, this was him for us against Watford. I mean, look at that for technique and composure and. You know, he, he he scores great goals and he's got variety in him as well. I mean, the goal he did score against, you know, Middlesbrough earlier in the season was fantastic. But here he's just got so much composure and balance and he knows where he is. And, you know, he he's just a terrific... This is his goal, isn't it? He's just a terrific footballer, Charlie, you know, and he knows... What I like about him, he's not just what they call a maverick. He's not someone who wins the game just purely on his own. He's also a brilliant connector. Mm. He knows how to bring other players into the four as well. And, you know, his assist, I think it was already for Borough, was a lovely cushioned layoff, which allowed the player to run in strike first time. So just those little bits of quality, they're starting to come to the, to the top now. The only thing you can hope is that our, <laughs> our defenders know exactly how he plays. Well, yeah, exactly. Training, you'd like to think. Stuff like yeah, that. You'd like to think, you know, and, and hopefully... You know, I've already said it, and I mean it genuinely. I hope he has a poor game today because it might give us more of a chance against something. But I want him to do well because we know he's, you know, away from today's game. We know what type of player he is and the person he is as well. Um, and we wish him well for the future. Yeah, just not today, Finn. Yeah, absolutely. Thank Indeed. you very much. Um, that win over Leicester was the Foxes' first home defeat since November. Let's see how they did it. 
A while now, promotion has been the probability rather than the possibility for Leicester. A chance here for the Foxes to break the 80-point barrier and move a step closer to a top-flight return. Not exactly the fixture of choice for Middlesbrough, who are out of form, struggling for goals and lagging behind in the playoff race. Ball played short. Dewsbury Hall, dangerous ball for Stigard! And somehow it's gone wide. It's on by Dewsbury Hall, Dacker back for Winks. Abedidi cutting him from the left, chasing this one down. Crucial touch there from McNair. O'Brien poking it wide for Silvera and getting the return. They've worked that beautifully. There's an overload here as they're screaming for it in the middle. We're getting closer to kick off here on Argyle TV. Remember, you can get your match passes, uh, both audio and video online. An audio match pass will cost you £2.50. If you are uh, outside the UK, you can stream the game for £10. All of the details can be found on our website. Because every time we touch, I get this feeling. And every time we kiss, I swear I can fly. Can't you feel my heart beat fast? I want this to last. Need you by my watching Argyle TV and the Greens are in search of their 10th league win of the season looking for their first victory in three weeks as well um, if they're going to do it they're going to have to beat a Middlesbrough side who have their eyes set on the playoffs we're getting closer and closer to kick off just under 20 minutes away uh, let's remind ourselves of the two sets of team news uh, and we'll start with Argyle who've made four changes from the side that lost to West Brom uh, Pleg Plegeth Wello and Houghton come back in. Miller and Sorinola, uh, the two wing backs, as we've seen over the last couple of matches, in as well, with Mumba and Sosa dropping to the bench. Callum Wright and Michael Cooper back in a match day squad for the first time in a while. Coops, of course, being out with an injury. So good to see him back involved. Um, Aaron, we were talking a little earlier on about the midfield and how Houghton and Randall are, are back in for the first time under Ian Foster and JB's gone further forward. Uh, he's going to be playing alongside Morgan Whitaker mm. and Ryan Hardy, who, um, you know, a lot of players did, but neither of them had much joy on Tuesday night. And it's very, very rare that they go more than one or two games without having some sort of output. Yeah, absolutely. So you'd like to think that today is a day that they, you know, take charge of the game again and get some some 
you know, contributions, goals, assists and whatnot. So I think they've got a very important job. So Whitaker and Hardy, we know what the relationship they've got, but JB, if he's going to come in and, you know, maybe as an orthodox, more left-hand side, if Whitaker prefers that right mm. side, for me, they've got to get closer to Hardy. What I haven't seen recently, Charlie, is players running past Hardy. And because we've been, we feel felt recently we've been a lot deeper, like almost five, six yards deeper with the fullbacks dropping. So everyone's coming towards our goal a bit more, which makes it harder to penetrate in behind. So I'd like to know, and hopefully we see that JB and, and Whitaker have a license at time to run beyond Hardy if he comes in to get the ball, just to kind of break that, that backline press. Um, and, you know, and I think with Houghton and, and Randall, you get that ultimate security in front mm. anyway. So that might invite Miller and Saranola to push on. Um, so let's see what, what happens. And, uh, JB does look like the type of player in the small sample size that we've had of him mm. that, he, that he is able to play further forward, actually. Like, he, he obviously is, is, is good and disciplined and yeah. good, on the, you know, good on the ball and breaks things up, but he has the technical ability to be able to do it. We saw, I think, on his home debut, a little reverse pass yeah. that got yeah. um, Whittaker free on the right uh, against Cardiff. So he, he looks, it is a small sample size, but he looks like he could play that create more creative role I think so too and, and someone who's had like I said formative years at Manchester City yeah. and been involved with the England setups and you know been to Leeds he's got quality and it might playing slightly higher might suit him because you'd, you'd assume that Middlesbrough will try and take the, um, the, the the assertiveness of trying to dominate possession um, we know that Carrot likes to play that way so that might encourage them to be quite high to kind of press us in and that will encourage JB to maybe get on the ball and carry the ball mm. at longer distances when it's really congested it might not be his game so we'll, we'll soon see um, but if not we know that he can revert more deeper and Rand can maybe push on and they've also got people you know on the suspense waiting to come in if need be Let's have a look at the Middlesbrough side shall we? Their win we saw earlier against um, Leicester. Make a couple of changes from that. Luke Thomas back in after injury. Uh, and Marcel Force comes in to bolster their attacking line. And when you do look at those forward-thinking players, they are missing a lot. I mean, Josh Coburn's out injured. Latte Lath is, is just back from injury as well. Um, but Finn is, as we've spoken about. Um, Silvera scored in that Leicester game. He's got a couple of goals recently. And Marcel Force, who missed the start of the season, Aaron, has got five goals, I think, since he's come back yeah. in. He 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 was on the books of Brentford in the in the Prem, and he looks like he's comfortable at this level for sure. Very much so, and and I think he's quite a big lad as well. So not only is he athletic and he's good with his feet, he's he's got a bit of a presence to him. And it, you know what what's interesting, and we rightly said previously, Charlie, about how they played a different style against Leicester. I think they've only scored three counter attacking based goals all year, and you could argue two of them were last yeah. week. Yeah. So it was a deliberate ploy. I think they'll revert to what they. You know they they're, they're used to doing today, um, and they, I think they've scored 32 goals in open play, and of like, of those goals, nearly 70 percent have come down the middle, and I think I, I saw a stat this morning as well. Of uh, and again, if you go another layer, another 69 percent have come inside the box. So they'll probably do. And I thought they did it against us when we played them at home, where they stretched us. Mm. So second half, they put two high and wide players against the touch lines to pull our back line out, and then they exploited the inner channels. And they scored one from it in particular. I think it was the third goal. Yeah. So that will definitely be a ploy to try and stretch and then penetrate through that middle area. So that hopefully, Houghton and Randall will be on cue to kind of thwart that central attack. On that then, how you know how, what are the keys for Argyle to do well today, do you think, to, to get a result? Uh, for me, I think they need to defend the box better. So they, they can't afford to drop deep. If they drop too deep into the box, it just invites teams on. And the closer you get to the goal, the bigger it becomes, in essence. So they've got to learn to step and defend the box on the line rather than drop, drop, drop. I also think that they've got to be, their fullbacks have got to tuck in and make it difficult to play through. So for me, with Houghton and, and, and Randall, Houghton's a very clever footballer for me, reads the game well. So whilst he might not be the most athletic, he knows how to just you know, drift into an area that may happen try to get exposed etc so really for me securing that central area in that attacking area in that attacking third or their attacking third yeah okay we're getting closer and closer just over 10 minutes to go final bit of build up to come after this
Well, we've got just enough time uh, before handing away to the Riverside Stadium to have a look at some of the other games being played in the championship today. Um, now, there were a couple of big wins yesterday in the sort of promotion race with Leeds beating Leicester and Preston thumping Coventry at the Good CBS Arena. Yeah, yeah, 3 0. Back in form just when we're about to play. That's great <laughs> news. Um, the early kickoff today, another tight one in the playoff picture, one all at the KCOM Stadium between Hull and uh, West Bromwich Albion. That means that they both stay in those playoff places with a three-point cushion to the sides below. Middlesbrough, pertinently, will have to try and get something today to, to keep in touch. But some very interesting games today, most notably um, at the Cardiff City Stadium, two sides that are not in good form in Cardiff and Stoke City. Um, and then the bottom of that graphic there, QPR against Rotherham, two sides in the relegation zone who will be absolutely desperate for points. So very, very big games for them. Uh, Southampton will, will want to try and get some form again, obviously going forward and we'll keep tabs on Swansea and Huddersfield as they take on Sunderland and Watford respectively as well. Um, just a final, final word from you, Aaron, considering the tricky period that Argyle have had. We quite often say this before a game, <laughs> but the start today, yeah, the first goal, the way Argyle approach the opening of the game does feel quite important very very I think so and I think it will that will run through the whole of the squad you know when and the fans you know when a team has had a good start they look focused they look ready to take on the challenge that's immediately in front of them and we've got to let the game unfold I mean as it currently stands, we know about the league positions. It's currently in our hands yeah, as yeah, to yeah. whether we stay up or not. Yeah. So that's a good thing to have. You don't want to be relying on others if you do your job and others don't. And looking at those fixtures, yeah, they can all win. They cannot all win. So therefore, whilst we are in a little bit of a precarious position compared to, to maybe two, three weeks ago, it's still very much in our hands. No, absolutely. 17, five points clear. Yeah. Fine. Absolutely <laughs> fine. Let's see if we can extend it today. That is the hope. Uh, match passes, if you haven't got them already, can be found on our website, pafc.co.uk. All of the details on how and uh, where you can watch from or listen to uh, is on the Argyle TV tab. Uh, but it is time to hand away to the Riverside Stadium. Argyle back in Middlesbrough for the first time in 13 years. Your commentary team will be the former Argyle midfielder Lee Makel and Nathan Alban. And it's coming up after this. 